In part six of the Shane Dawson series, The Mind of Jake Paul, this one's called The Secrets of Jake Paul, they talk a lot about the Team 10 house, and there's so much we can learn about friends, roommates, and living with family, so make sure that you stay tuned. You like that, Zach? You like me rubbing my nose? You better. <laughs> What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about helping you with your mental and emotional well-being. And as you can suspect, like there's a lot to do with mental and emotional well-being with like who you live with. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. I've been recapping all of the Shane Dawson series. And while I'm here in beautiful Los Angeles, California, on the last day, my buddy Zach of Zack Snyder Productions has been just killing it, killing it with the editing, killing it with the thumbnails. Like I actually like his thumbnails more than mine. I don't know what he does. I'm gonna have to have him teach me when I get back. But do me a favor, if you've been watching the last few days of my channel and you enjoy Zach's editing, do me a favor, let him know, leave him some love down in the comments. And if you're into like nerd culture and stuff, he like just started doing like a, a daily show during the week about like nerd culture type stuff. So make sure you go check out his channel and subscribe. Love this dude. Anyways, let's get started. So in part six, Secrets of Jake Paul, um, this is my third video. And in this one, like I, I just, I love how we can pull different situations from this because a lot of you might be struggling with it. And this one, they talked a lot about Jake's living situation and and Erica kind of opened up about it to Shane as well as Katie. So basically what they were talking about is that Jake has this gigantic mansion, doesn't like being alone, so he has all these people move in, you know, his friends or the Team 10 members. Uh, he has Erica there too, all right? And some very good topics came up. Um, Erica also discussed how Jake's father moved in with them like a few months prior and he's living like on the third floor. All right, so we're gonna talk about friends, being alone, living with family, being in a relationship, living with family, all that stuff. All right, so the first the first one is, is I don't know, it's, it's difficult like living with other people. So there's so many things. I can make an entire playlist about living with friends and having roommates. And I think it depends on the people, but I've lived with friends most of my life and probably the last few years is the first time that I've just had my own place by myself. Like, I just like having my own place, but I've lived with my best friends in the world who I've known since I was a kid, and like, I know a lot of us struggle with this. Like, this can be your best friend, but for some reason, when you move in with them, you just want to strangle them. Like, maybe they like, I don't know, drink out of the milk carton, or they don't put stuff away. That's like, every little thing just makes you wanna, Arr! and maybe that's just some of us. Maybe that's just some of us. But there is a time where it's like, you know, we gotta look at being alone versus, you know, wanting to strangle our best friends. So so let's talk about the subject of not wanting to be alone real quick. Erica mentioned that. So it's not a good it's not good to have people living here with Jake. Great, like love him. He's you know, whatever, but living in this house not good for anybody. I think living in this house isn't good for you, Jake, or literally. Living in this big mansion. Mm -hmm. In Jake's case, yeah, like I ugh. Ugh. It, like it's difficult because he has he has a girlfriend, so you know maybe they'll go get their own place or kick everybody out. I don't know. But like Shane said, they do not need a gigantic mansion. Like I'm just letting you all know if if for some crazy reason I ever become like super rich and famous, like I am just not having a huge mansion. One, I don't need it. Two, I would get really scared like walking through it in the middle of the night, like having to go to like the bathroom or the fridge or something. Uh uh. No thank you, I don't play that. Anyways, but talking about him being alone. So like, being alone or having these feelings of loneliness, like this is, this is a huge issue for a lot of reasons. One of them is you'll live with people that you don't like living with or they're holding you back or they're keeping you back and they're not 
um, allowing you to progress in your life and become the adult or the person that you wanna be. But the other thing is, like, let's talk about relationships real quick. Like, I know a lot of you out there, you struggle with being alone, and what happens is you jump into a lot of toxic, bad relationships, because when our fear of loneliness or fear of dying alone, it gets so big, we start to lower our bar, right, for the other person. He doesn't, he doesn't do well with being alone, so I feel like that's why all of his friends, you know, live here. He, no matter what, like even if they're not doing what they're supposed to be, he keeps them around because he appreciates people who he can trust to be around him all the time. So what happens is, is our fear outweighs like our standards, you know? And that's something that we really gotta check in with. And like, this is gonna sound dumb to some of you. To some of you, this is gonna sound amazing. But here's something that I learned. You know what? I got time. Let me tell you the story about how I got my beautiful cat. Like, I got my cat, Maya. She made a guest appearance in the other video that I did with Dr. Alex. I actually got my cat, Maya, when I was uh, already dating my girlfriend. And, like, I just, I just realized, like, I was getting lonely a lot. Like, and, and I made a video a long time ago about feeling lonely versus being alone. So those of us who struggle with depression, we can feel lonely even though we're not alone. What do I mean by that? Like, my brain tells me I'm alone, right? But I have my beautiful girlfriend, my son, friends, family members, I have so many people in my life, but when you're in that situation by yourself, and I was just living in my apartment by myself, my brain would tell me that I was alone. And you know what the solution is? Get a cat, get a cat or a dog, I don't know, get a goldfish if that's, that's your thing. But like, I don't know, like for me, for me, and maybe it might not work for you, maybe it will, like, get a cat, get an animal, like, it is great. Like, I, I don't know, ever since I got this freaking cat, like, I just haven't had that feeling of loneliness. Like, my girlfriend and I were moving together soon, but like, we only see each other on the weekends, and like, I would notice that I was just feeling really lonely during the week, because I would only see my girlfriend on the weekends, I would only have my son on the weekends, so like, I would feel lonely. So like, what I'm trying to say is, there are other alternatives rather than going out and dating terrible men or going out and dating terrible women. You know what I mean? Like, if you're lonely, get an animal companion. Make sure you can keep it alive and do that, all right? So, the last subject I want to talk about is living with family members. Um, I just want to say this real quick. Like, Erica might have put herself in a really awkward position. Like, that's interesting. I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting because she, she said all this about Greg. And she did it in a very tactful way but I can see it stirring some stuff and I don't, I don't know. Like, I wonder what's going on behind the scenes. Like, and for all of you out there, I don't know if you've been in a situation where you've disliked your significant other's parents or even if you didn't dislike them, like maybe they let them move in with you. Like, for example, and I'll say this right now, I'll say it on camera, I don't even care. Um, my girlfriend and I are getting a new apartment. I'm trying to get my mom to move out to Las Vegas, but my girlfriend and I were getting our own place. And my mom's like, can, can I live with you? And I'm like, no, sorry. You know what I mean? Like, I just told her that. I set up that boundary. And I love my mom. Me and my mom have fun. My girlfriend loves my mom. But kind of like the same reasons that Erica was talking about, like, it just, it changes things in a different way. You know what I mean? So, um... So like, that's just a boundary that I set up and I, Jake might not be able to set that boundary. Like, Jake's a millionaire. He could have bought his, his dad another mansion or another house or something, you know what I mean? But like Erica points out, and this is something that Jake and his dad need to work on, but like, you see Jake's mood change. And I mentioned this in uh, other videos about the family of Jake Paul, like that entire freaking family needs therapy, you know? Um, but, but yeah, like, it, it can be uncomfortable living with family members, especially like when you're an adult, but like I get it because we feel indebted to them. But like, I don't know, a good example, depending on your opinions of him, Jeffree Star recently reconnected with his mother and he just bought her a place. Like she was living on the streets, he bought her a place. And I think that was smart. Like Jeffree's got a huge mansion, but he moved her in somewhere. You know, and I know not everybody watching this is a millionaire and all of that. Like I, I guess what I'll leave you with on that note is, it's going to depend 
person to person, situation to situation. Okay, like you might not be in a financial position or your, your parents might not be in a financial position for them to get their own place. But I've mentioned this in other videos, I forgot which one I did recently, but like I, set a boundary, like when someone's moving in, I set a time limit on it. Like, okay, you can come stay with me, but it's only for X amount of months, right? I think I mentioned it, my friend Nikki, um, who's a school teacher. Like, when she came to live with me, because she had some stuff go on, I was like, you can stay with me for three months, then you're out of here, right? But as time went on, like I realized, okay, it's cool, it's kind of nice having her in the house, and you know, it's cool, right? Like, so she ended up staying with me for like almost a year before she ended up getting her own place. But I had set the boundary previously, so I would say this, whether it's your parents, whether it's your friends, whether it's whoever, because so much of relationships, even you and your significant other or your uh, your husband or wife, it's about communication, right? And it's about compromising, it's about meeting in the middle. So if you are in, in a situation where your mom or dad or family member has to stay with you, just make sure that you like set up some kind of boundary. Like don't just let somebody like come in, mooch off you um, and enable them and all of that. Like enabling people is, is just as bad as not helping them at all. Like, it, and that's some real stuff. You know, I've talked a lot about that in this Shane Dawson series about enabling and how people enable others to, you know, not progress in their life or just have bad, I don't know, bad things going on. You know what I mean? So like, make sure you're setting up boundaries and you're not enabling those other people. But anyways, that's all I got for you with this video. If any of you have any experience with any of the topics, like whether you struggle with loneliness, you always need somebody around, like can you relate to what I was saying about like your, your fear of being alone makes you lower your bar with like who you date? Do you have any experience with family moving in and it causing turmoil with your significant other? Any of that stuff, like I said, I think there's a lot that everybody can learn from each other down in the comments below, all right? So thanks so, so much for watching. Thank you, Zach, for editing this final video for me while I am out of town. I love you so much. Go check out Zach's channel, Zach Snyder, Zach Snyder Productions. I'm tired, I'm sorry. It's in the description and all that. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for you. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I will see you when I'm back in Vegas and make the next video. Bye.